This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 755, Sometimes You Have to Quit, by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, most of the time, reading to you every day, including holidays, but not this week, because I'm doing a little something special and having guest narrators come on and do my job. I'll tell you about today's guest narrator in a second. First, thank you to Four Sigmatic for keeping this show alive. Four Sigmatic is mushroom coffee, superfood blends, and mushroom elixirs. Now, different kinds of mushrooms have different health benefits, so Four Sigmatic has created these easy-to-consume, tasty drinks, and you can get 15% off your order by using my code OLD. The link is foursigmatic.com slash old. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com slash O-L-D, and I also have it linked in this episode's description. So today's guest narrator is Kristen Wong, who I got to meet at FinCon a couple of months ago. Actually, the authors over the next two days were all authors that I got to meet there, part of the reason why I picked them. And she has a book coming out. Definitely check it out online. She's an amazing freelance writer, and I'm looking forward to it. It's called Get Money. It's available for pre-order and coming out in March. But for today, she's gonna narrate one of her newer articles on her site. So let's get right to it as we optimize your life. My junior year in high school, a friend suggested I join the newspaper. I loved to write, I was kind of a weirdo, and our high school's journalism class embraced both of those things. You couldn't just decide to be a high school journalist, though. You had to apply. So I wrote the teacher and editor-in-chief a letter, sent them some writing clips, and I got the job. If I wanted it, I could be a reporter for The Badge. There was just one problem. I already had too many electives, so one of them had to go. I decided to ditch the one I found most boring. Ironically, that was drama. Drama just wasn't for me. I hated performing, I wasn't great at it, and I only continued to do it because, up until then, I didn't know what else to do. I was nervous to ask our drama teacher, who was notoriously already kind of an to sign my drop form. I knew he would razz me about it. But the lack of punches he pulled was pretty astounding. He signed the paper, heaved it at me without making eye contact, and said, I always knew you were a quitter. It felt strange to be given this label. Quitter was not a trait I'd ever considered for myself. I was on the soccer team, where I was forced to keep running when my legs felt like jelly. I made good grades because I forced myself to stay up and study even though I was tired. I had an after-school job because my parents told me if I wanted to drive their car, I'd have to pay for my own insurance and gas. With all of that going on, I would now have to squeeze in writing for the newspaper. But no, I was a quitter. I took the drop form and walked away, wondering if I should just stay in drama and tell the journalism crew I couldn't accept the position. Thankfully, a good friend and fellow high school journalist gave me some sage advice. Don't listen to that guy, he said. I took the advice and spent my junior year chasing stories, interviewing subjects, designing pages, writing essays. Journalism was the best thing I ever did in high school, the first time I felt fulfilled and the first time I felt a sense of belonging. Still, the drama classroom was right next to the journalism classroom, and every time I passed by, I was reminded of that shameful title. Quitter was a strange badge to wear, but it was worth it to find my passion. No one wants to be a quitter because we equate quitting with failure. But ironically, a fear of quitting can get in the way of success. If the only reason you're doing something is that you're afraid to quit, it's probably time to stop doing that thing. It was a cruel thing for my drama teacher to say to a 16-year-old, not just because it was petty and mean, but because it stuck with me for far too long and seriously got in the way of my success. At 25, I was a technical writer. I knew I wanted to switch careers and pursue a more creative kind of writing, so I moved to Los Angeles to be a screenwriter, because that seemed fun and it seemed like something I would enjoy. For a while, I did it, and I made money at it. Within a year, I started writing for an entertainment news show, and while the pay wasn't great, it was cool to see my name scroll through the writing credits on TV. I wrote a web series for Fox Digital, and the pay was better. A year later, I got a gig scripting and producing an online series, and the pay was stellar. Meanwhile, I wrote and performed, for free, at Upright Citizens Brigade and I.O. West because that's what you're supposed to do if you want to make it in the entertainment industry. I was grateful to make some headway, so I felt like an asshole complaining about the work incessantly to my family. 
The truth was, I did not enjoy dissecting comedy with a team of writers. I hated performing, and I hated the sketches I wrote, even when they got laughs. When I had to sit down and write a script, I dreaded it. Other writers, comedians, and performers around me really enjoyed this industry. They rocked it, and I could tell they belonged here and they would do big things someday. By comparison, I should have known this was not for me. I didn't have the same enthusiasm or drive they did. I really didn't care if I got better at this or if I sucked at it. It was just a job, which is exactly how I felt as a technical writer. On the side, I started writing essays and articles for websites and blogs and began making headway with that. And again, I felt fulfilled. When I had to sit down and write an article or essay, I savored it. My 16-year-old dilemma returned. I wanted to pursue this new thing I felt passionate about. But this time, I did not heed the advice. I did not immediately give up my old elective for a new one. I always knew you were a quitter, echoed in my head, and I worried about what my screenwriter friends would think if I gave up. I worried what my family and friends back home would think too. Never mind that I actually enjoyed writing articles for media outlets, I couldn't let go of the fear of someone thinking, Kristen gave up trying to be a screenwriter and now she writes for the internet? How sad. My fear of being stuck with that old quitter label was just too much, so for years I tried to do both. I said yes when Lifehacker asked me to launch a blog for them, but I also pitched web series ideas to companies. I was excited when NBC News hired me to write stories for them, but I also took on a script writing gig with another big media company. I felt unsure of myself, distracted and confused. In 2015, I got tired of not feeling like myself. For a handful of reasons, I constantly felt like I had no sense of identity, but mostly the problem was that I prioritized other people's thoughts, opinions, and feelings over my own. So I made a plan. I stopped saying yes to things out of obligation and started saying no to things I didn't have to do and didn't want to do. I dropped the screenwriting class I forced myself to take. I said no when another client approached me to write online scripts for them. Then I had a realization. I would rather be happy as a success in my own eyes than be miserable as a success in someone else's. In other words, I stopped caring what everyone around me might think, and I quit. The thing about passion is, it's not something you're born with, and it's not some fixed concept that doesn't change. Like most things in life, passion is more fluid, more nuanced than that. Passion is something you discover as you explore new hobbies and say yes to new experiences and opportunities. Sure, you can try to do all the things, even the ones you're not that passionate about, but that can also just distract you from discovering what it is you truly love and enjoy. Remember season one of True Detective? It was great, and there was an incredible line that hit me in the gut. Life's barely long enough to get good at one thing, so be careful what you get good at. Now that's good screenwriting. It's the kind of writing that comes from being passionate about what you do. That line has stuck with me as a mantra. It reminds me that sometimes you have to make tough decisions. Sometimes you have to make room for the things you truly enjoy and give up what other people might think about that. Sometimes you have to quit. You just listened to the post titled Sometimes You Have to Quit by Kristen Wong of thewildwong.com. This is something I could definitely relate to. Before I talk about that, thank you again to Four Sigmatic for sponsoring this episode. So Four Sigmatic, they found out about the show and reached out and I said, I don't like eating mushrooms and I don't drink coffee, so it doesn't really make sense for me to talk about it. But I decided, what the heck, and I tried it. I tried their hot cacao, I tried their elixirs, their coffees, pretty much everything. It's perfect for the winter, and it doesn't taste like mushrooms. It's actually really good, and what's cool is that there are different mushrooms with different health benefits and properties for different drinks. So the chaga mushroom, which is one of my favorite drinks, that one's supposed to help with immunity. And their hot cacaos are really good too, and they have ones that will perk you up, and also with reishi, which has been studied, and it's supposed to help you relax. I really like that they're bringing these different kinds of mushrooms into our diets in a unique and very good tasting way, which I've never seen before. It's not something I normally talk about, but the fact that they were successful in getting me to consume mushrooms is a huge achievement, and it speaks a lot towards how good the drink tastes. I actually just ordered a bunch today. So I got a special code with them, OLD, you can get 15% off. The link is foursigmatic.com slash old. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G. M-A-T-I-C dot com slash O-L-D and I have it linked in this episode's description. 
So back to today's post, my business partner Lee and I have had a deal with quitting. Our first venture around six years ago was a mobile app and it started eating more money than we anticipated, not making enough to be sustainable. So we had to pull the plug on that, but we did it at a great time and were able to turn things around completely. And now we slowly moved away from apps into these podcasts, which has been our most successful venture to date and by far the most fulfilling, that's the most important part. So I'm happy she narrated this one for you and hopefully you got a lot out of it. Make sure you check out her book, Get Money. It's coming out in March, but it's available for pre-order. Come by thewildwong.com for more info. That should do it for today. Hope you're having a great day and I'll be back tomorrow with a book excerpt narrated by the author and someone I also met at FanCon. So stay tuned for that where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.